Is God on the move in your life this morning? I hope He is. We hope that you, while you're gathered here and while you worship Him, that you will feel the presence and the power of God on the move in your life. That's why we've gathered. That's why we worship, so that we can get reoriented around Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and be ready to move forward with whatever God has in store for us this week. We're glad that you're here for this. We're glad you're here online as well. Welcome to our online church family uh, to this time of worship. I want to give you just a few things coming up, and then we'll invite you to stand. We'll all sing our praises to the Lord together. Uh, first thing is a reminder that this Thursday is our monthly Young at Heart Senior Adult Luncheon. Um, there we go. Senior Adult Luncheon. It's going to be from 11.30 to 1 o'clock, like usual, in Cooper Hall. All senior adults are invited to come, even if you've never been. Come and just have a good time of fellowship, uh, of food, and uh, a little bit of learning as we bring in different speakers each month. Uh, it's a great time. You can bring a dish to share. That's this Thursday, uh, starting at 11.30. We'd love to have you there. This Saturday, we're doing something new. Hopefully, you've seen the, uh, uh, the information out there in the lobby and the sign-up sheets is that we're hosting a pumpkin carving and chili cook-off contest on Saturday. Uh, you can sign up. There are sheets out there. Let us know so that we can do some food preparation for that. Uh, that's also going to be in Cooper Hall. It's 5 to 7 o'clock this Saturday night. Uh, and there's food that goes with that. $5 for individuals, $10 for families, just like what we do on Wednesdays. Thought we'd just do something new and something fun as we move into the fall. Sometimes you're living in Florida, you can't ever tell when summer ends and fall begins, right? This week you can. It's going to be nice and cool. So we'll finish the week by carving some pumpkins and uh, tasting some chili. If you've got a family chili recipe you think you can win, bring it on. It's going to be a good time this Saturday. And then on Saturday the 28th, another opportunity. Again, we're, just, we're trying to provide these environments and these areas where we can just gather for fellowship and get to know the people of the church and have a little fun together. So Saturday the 28th is the Autumn Gathering, which is sponsored by our United Women in Faith group. You can get those tickets today. Uh, they said they're going to be at the gazebo outside there uh, and also in Cooper Hall. So come for that um, Autumn Gathering. Uh, all the proceeds from that go to the United Women in Faith Projects, the mission partners that they support. So just three things coming up for, for food and fellowship, a chance to get to know the good people of this church. Uh, I invite you to stand. We're here to worship the Lord. We're going to affirm our faith together. If you would stand as you're able, those of you at home, please join us as well. Uh, this is one of the uh, historic creeds of the church that define uh, what we believe as, as followers of Jesus Christ as Christians. So let's affirm our faith together with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us in our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the holy spirit and the virgin mary and became truly human for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's worship our Lord together.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do pray for that this morning. We pray that as we, uh, as we worship you, as we, we give you our hearts, we give you our minds, our eyes, our ears, as we give you our whole lives, that we would just be overcome with a sense of your presence and power. Our Heavenly Father, we need so much more of you in our lives. We need you to lead us. We need you to guide us. We need you to forgive us. Father, do forgive us for where we have fallen short. Where we have not been the followers of Jesus that we need to be. Forgive us and get us back up on the right path. That we would follow Jesus wherever he might lead. Wherever he goes trusting in your will for our lives, trusting in your plan. Father, so much uh, going on in the world around us over the past couple of weeks, so much to pray for. So much shock, so much disbelief about what's going on in the Middle East right now. Father God, we pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Israel and beyond in their time of grieving in their time of fear and concern we pray Father for, for justice to be served but for it to be done quickly and that as much as possible that innocent lives would be protected and that there could be a restoration of uh, some semblance of peace we know that you have called us to be peacemakers Father, so much of our lives we live in this world and we live among sinful and broken, uh, hurting people and at times among, among evil. That we understand that, uh, that so often the way to peace is through justice. So we pray for your will to be done. We pray for your protection uh, upon those who are uh, fighting for what's good and right. Lord, we know it's not just in the Middle East, it's, uh, it's everywhere. Evil wants to have its way. Help us to know what to do, how to pray, so that evil can't have its way. So that what is, what is true and good and right and holy uh, would be made real will become part of the, of the reality that we live in. Father, just uh, back here at, at home, we do pray for our church and its ongoing ministry. We're, we're grateful that in the last month that you've given us great clarity on, uh, on our future and our direction, and we're getting more and more excited about what you're going to do through us. And we just pray that in the midst of that, that we just would not lose sight of what the mission is to make disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to serve your community well through our many ministries that serve in, in practical ways, whether it's our thrift shop ministry or our food pantry or other things that we do to uh, minister uh, to Zephyr Hills and to Dade City and the, and the Wesley Chapel and, and even beyond. It all comes back to making disciples. And so help us to keep that in the front of our minds. That, and these activities that we do, these fellowship activities from the, the young at heart to the to the pumpkin carving, to the, the women in faith and what they're doing, Lord, that it would all uh, be about providing environments and spaces for people to grow in their faith, to get a greater sense of you, that we could just be overwhelmed with your presence and your power. 
Continue to make us into the men and women you've created us to be. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught all of his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's now time to dismiss our children to the children's church up to fifth grade. Uh, we'll meet at the this door. And if we have any high schoolers, uh, sixth grade through twelfth grade with us, we also have a Sunday school class that uh, they'll be attending. And then afterwards, if you pick your children up in the youth room across from the nursery, kids are probably pretty to the hall. Okay. I also like to invite our ushers to prepare for our offering. A reminder that offerings can be done online. It's quick and simple and secure. And, uh, you can do it as a one-time thing or a recurring thing. It, it's just really nice and easy. give back to you now with our tithes and our offerings. And we hope that you will use them to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Let's do the chorus one more time. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you every hour. Every hour I need you. You're my one, my one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Let's bring it together. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Scripture reading comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verses 7 through 11. Hear the word of God. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The, st- the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is a great reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning again, church. It's good to be back after a week out going up to Indiana and uh, just spending some time with my father and enjoying the trees and the changing of the colors in the trees. I, uh, I watched online uh, worship last week. I want to send my thanks to, to our choir director, Miriam, for bringing the word of God last Sunday. Uh, if you were not here, you might want to go to our website and just check that out. Uh, she gave a really insightful message on the kindness of Jesus, um, did a marvelous job. And again, you can go to our website and you can check that out or our YouTube channel and get more information about that. Most of you know, uh, those of you that have been here, we're running an experiment right now. We have been for a few weeks and we've got a couple more weeks and we'll kind of wrap it up. But we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to start a ripple effect of kindness in our communities. And so we've, we've encouraged you to take these cards that are available in the baskets at the doors on your way out and uh, just, just find some way uh, to, to practice a, a random act of kindness wherever you find yourself. Something small, it doesn't have to be something huge. Uh, but it's an anonymous act of kindness uh, with, with a purpose. Now the goal is not to gain anything in return. And again, the, the sermon last Sunday really uh, explained that quite well. That we do this not because just we were created in the image of God, I was created in the image of God, but because you were created in the image of God. Other people were created in, in the image of God. And so we want to be, to be kind, to demonstrate the kindness of God uh, to them. We're, we're, we're wanting to use our lives to impact other people in such a way that they're just inspired to, to pass it on. And so again, we've got plenty of these cards left, and please, please use those up. When we practice uh, that act of kindness, we're leaving this card, uh, hopefully that will lead people to our Facebook page, and they, can, and they can share a little bit of the story about how that might have impacted their life. A few weeks ago when we began this, uh, I, I threw out an, an, an offhanded comment, and, and someone had, had asked me about that. I was talking about starting this ripple effect of kindness here in Zephyr Hills and Dade City and Wesley Chapel and going beyond that. And I, and I said on that first Sunday something like, be led by the Holy Spirit. God will lead you. Listen to him. Trust him. The Holy Spirit will, will show you opportunities and how you can start a ripple effect of kindness. And, and someone asked me, and probably some of you were thinking, how do I do that? How do I hear the voice of God? How do I know it's Him? How am I led by the Holy Spirit? Excellent questions. That's what we want to go with today. It's a question that most of us have at one time or another, um, and even just outside of this whole ripple effect thing and, and acts of kindness. How do you hear the voice of God? How does God lead us? That's one of the great questions in following Jesus Christ. How do we hear God's voice and leading in our lives? How does God guide us? 
Wouldn't it be easier, don't you think, if God just dropped a, a clear sign from the sky, right? Wouldn't it be easier if God sent us a text? God, what would you have me do? Ding, oh, lovely, thank you very much. And then you, you know what to do. That's, that's, not, that's kind of a movie way of God leading us. That's not, that's not real life. I would love it if God would send me an email, send me a text message, and just read that and happily go on my way. But in real life, God's leading doesn't really work that way. Very rarely works that way anyway. I think that, that for most of us here, we want to know God's will for our lives. That's why we're here. We want to know what God wants for us. What is, what is his will for our lives? And the thing is, God wants us to know his will for our lives. He really does. And, and as we'll, we'll discover, hopefully, it's, it's, not, it's not as hard as we make it out to be to, to know God's will, how he's leading us. In fact, a lot, much, maybe the majority of what God wants us to know about living our lives, we already have it. It has actually been written down. It's not hidden. And its understanding isn't reserved just for spiritual giants. It's available to each and every one of us in the Bible. A lot of what God already wants us to know, it's right there in the Word of God. And what we find in here, what we find is we, we discover God's general will for people in the Bible. When we talk about knowing God's will, we need to understand that there are two different aspects of God's will. There's God's general will for all people and his specific will for specific times and places and specific people in certain circumstances, right? General will and specific will. God's general will for all people in all times and all places, it's found in the Bible, and it never changes. It doesn't change. Much of the guidance that we want for our lives has already been revealed as, as general principles for living in the Word of God. Life principles that never change regardless of our circumstances. Valid for people all around the world. Valid for people all throughout history. God has already told us what he thinks about a wide variety of issues. Marriage, relationships, work and productivity, money management, time management. The general principles are all found in, in the Bible. From the Bible we know that certain things are right and good. From the Bible, we know that certain things are, are wrong. And we, we know if, if the Bible says something clearly, we, we can be very sure that God will not guide us to do things that are wrong. We don't have to wonder and we don't have to guess. An example of this that I've, that I've used before is, is marriage. Now, believe it or not, in, in my time as a pastor in the different churches I've served, I, I have had on occasion... Uh, married persons who wanted to talk to me, so we set up a time, we get a cup of coffee, we go out somewhere, we talk. Uh, on more than one occasion, a married person has come to me and said something like this. Pastor Steve, I've fallen in love with another person. We love each other so much. I, I honestly feel that God is leading me to, to leave my spouse, my husband, my wife, and to embrace this new relationship. I am so in love with him, with her. This, this must be God's will, right? No. <laughs> no. God has already made his will clear on this issue. You may be in love, and that not, not denying that. But God has already made his will very, very clear on this issue. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, and in other places, God has said, you shall not commit adultery. So, regardless of how you feel, you can be completely certain that God will never guide us to commit adultery. It's not in his will, never in his will. And that's why I'm saying it's an example uh, where, where in this area and many other areas in life, God has already revealed his general will for all people in all places. We don't need to ask for his guidance. We already have his guidance. He's already given it. If we're not sure whether the Bible says anything about a particular issue, uh, ask someone who, who knows the Bible pretty well, uh, maybe better than we do, or uh, you know, maybe you can do some research online. Kind of got to be a little bit careful with online stuff, but there's some really good, safe places as well. Uh, but talk to someone. Talk to someone in church who knows. And, and once we find what the Bible says, and it's clear, we don't need to search any further. We don't need to ask any further. That's the scripture that Conway just read for us. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord, they're trustworthy, making wise the simple. So once we figure out what God has said in the Bible, we don't need to ask, we don't need to guess, we don't need to wonder. General principles for, for living healthy and productive lives are found in the word of God. That's why we need to read it. That's why we need to know it. 
When we, when we talk about Bible studies and the small groups we have that are studying parts of the Word of God, it's not about learning obscure, uh, trivial knowledge so that we can like kill on Jeopardy someday. That's not what it's about, right? It's about learning how we can live. How do we know God's general will for our lives? Here we go. That's, that's God's general will. Now, God's general will and God's specific will. God's specific will, that's the guidance that he gives us in particular situations that we face. Right? Now, God's general will is revealed in the Bible, uh, but we can't always find his particular will uh, for our lives here. Give you an example. Since I gave you a marriage example earlier, let's let's stay there in in marriage. So the Bible tells us uh, that it is is God's uh, general will uh, for for most people to get married. We know that singleness is a high calling, and there are times and and places where God does call people into the lives of singleness, and it can be a beautiful thing. We actually talked about that uh, about a month and a half ago. But for most people, most people will get married at some point in their lives. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 talks about that. We also know from the Bible about marriage, we know that Christians are are only free to marry other Christians. It talks about not being uh, unequally yoked, and so believers need to marry uh, other believers. In fact, for success in marriage, you just kind of need to be equal. Even if you don't believe in God, you're better off than marrying someone who doesn't believe in God. I mean, it's just going to go work better for you in your marriage uh, to not be unequally uh, together with other people. Uh, But the Bible doesn't tell us who specifically we should marry, right? We have general principles, general ideas, but, that's, but, but to tell us who we should marry, that's specific. And, and God's specific will for us usually comes through the Holy Spirit. God hasn't left us alone here on planet Earth. It's not as if God has created us, uh, left us alone for thousands of years, and then sent his son Jesus for 30-some years, and then uh, left us alone again. No, the Bible says that when we become Christians, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, comes to live with us. Let me read for you this scripture from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Just a, just a couple of verses here, 15, 16, and 17. John 14. This is Jesus talking. He says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. It's the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. And when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, he begins to communicate with us. He begins to guide us. Jesus said that his sheep, his followers, he was using an agricultural imager, his his sheep, they would recognize his voice like, like the sheep recognize the voice of the shepherd who they've done life with and the shepherd who guides and leads them. And so we need to learn to hear his voice. And we do that through spending time with him. Let me give you an example. When the, when the telephone rings, right, whether you've got a landline or, you know, most people now with the cell phones, the telephone rings, you've got a good signal, uh, and the person on the other end speaks, sometimes we immediately recognize that voice, and sometimes we don't, right? You ever had those situations where you answer the phone, hello, and they say hello, and the moment they say hello, you know exactly who it is. You recognize that. Or sometimes they say hello, and they start having a conversation, and two minutes in, you're like, uh, yeah, who, who is this? Who is this? What's the difference? What's the difference between recognizing the voice on the phone and not recognizing the voice on the phone? The difference is how much time you have spent with that other person, isn't it? How much time you've spent with that other person Outside of the phone call. Listen, when my cell phone rings, and if I'm not looking, I'm not paying attention, and I pick it up, and, and I hear uh, my wife's voice, I recognize immediately my wife's voice. I don't have to look to see who it's from, call her ID. No, I recognize my wife's voice on the telephone. I recognize my closest friend's voices on the phone. Now, life has made a lot easier in the, in the day of cell phones because you usually you got them in your, in your book and the name comes up. But remember back in the day when they were just landlines, you didn't have caller ID, and you had to play the guessing game when someone would ring, 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 and hello, hey, guess who this is? I don't want to guess who this is. Tell me who this is. You recognize the voice of those people who you spend the most time with, don't you? They don't need to say who it is. If I don't know the person very well, it's harder to figure out who it is. It right? takes more time to figure out who it is. 
My point is, the more time we spend getting to know Jesus, the easier it will be for us to recognize his voice. That's why so many of us have a hard time recognizing the voice of Jesus leading and guiding us. We don't honestly spend a lot of time with him. When you do, the more time you spend getting to know Jesus, the easier you're going to find to recognize his voice. Guidance from the Holy Spirit often comes to us when we pray. Prayer, uh, as, it's, as it's designed, as we know it, as it's taught, prayer is supposed to be a dialogue, not a monologue. It's not just uh, blurting out your, your laundry list of, of, of things you want and then kind of going away. Prayer is supposed to be a, a conversation with the Lord. And sometimes we don't get the guidance that we want from prayer because we, we, don't, we, we don't, forgive me, we don't shut up long enough for God to actually talk back to us, right? Dear God, okay, I'm done, and I go away. Maybe, maybe God would like to respond <laughs> to you and hey, take time to listen. Take time. It's a conversation. It's a dialogue. We, too often we just present our wish list and, and, and then, we, then we go away. And it's just hard to receive guidance when we're not listening. When we take time to listen, we find that sometimes thoughts come to our minds, right? That's a very common way in which God speaks to us. Thoughts come to our minds. People sometimes describe that as impressions or they, you know, feeling it in their, in their soul. Another way the Holy Spirit uh, sometimes guides us is by giving us a strong desire to do something. Now, of course, you need to test these things. You need to test those desires. You need to test those thoughts and those feelings. Uh, but these are just a couple common ways that, that God guides us, that, that through his spirit he, he speaks to us and he guides us. Occasionally God guides us in more unusual ways. If you know the stories from the Old Testament, you know Moses had his burning bush moment, right? Moses is out, you know, tending to the flocks, and there's this, this bush that was burning up, but it wasn't burning up. There was this fire, and that was God uh, speaking to him. Uh, it doesn't happen to I've never had that. Have you had that? No, it never happened to me. It happened to Moses. That's, so that's a, that's a pretty rare thing. As a young boy, the prophet Samuel in the Old Testament actually heard God through his ears. I, to actually hear God, to hear a voice that, like, no one else hears, and, you know, I've had that happen to me twice in my entire life. That it, was, that it was God speaking to me. Uh, that, that's how God confirmed his plan to me to become a pastor. And this is many, many years ago. Uh, it, in my whole life, only twice have I heard what, what, what to me was the audible voice of God. And I think God did that for me because God knew that I was really just too thick-headed to hear him any other way. <laughs> it's like, you're not looking, you're not paying attention, so let me just, you know, just speak to you. Uh, but that's, that's a way that occasionally God will guide people. Uh, I think God, the Bible says that God guides at times people through, through angels, uh, through dreams, and, and through visions. Again, you kind of got to test those things, talk with people you know, people that know your life, know your heart, uh, and test those things. But God sometimes does, does speak in those ways. All these ways uh, that, that God has guided people in the past through his Holy Spirit. Uh, we read about in the Word of God. He still does that today sometimes. He really does. So when it comes to starting uh, a ripple effect with, with any decision in your life, uh, you can be led by the Holy Spirit. God does not want his will for your life to be mysterious or unknown. He wants you to know. He wants you to be guided by him. He wants you to follow. So, so you listen to the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads us to take a huge step in faith to take risks, to, to do something that might seem irrational. It would be a little bit scary. But I can promise you this, from what we know from, from the Bible, from experience, we, we can be confident that God will never, ever lead us to do something that contradicts what he's already said in the Bible. If you ever think you're getting a leading from God that contradicts this, it's not from God. It's from somewhere else, okay? It will never contradict that. Now, sometimes we, we might not immediately understand God's guidance, and so you know, we, we pray, we listen. Again, we have that dialogue. And, and then oftentimes we seek wise counsel. You can talk to your pastor, you talk to a friend, your, your Bible study leader, and, and oftentimes we just, we just need to use common sense as well. So if, if God speaks to us today through his Holy Spirit, leads us today through his Spirit, uh, and God wants us to hear him, he, he wants to guide us because he's got a great plan for our lives. He wants us to follow him. So why is it sometimes uh, that we, we just don't hear from the Holy Spirit like we want to? Why do we not hear from the Spirit of God like we want to? And I just want to kind of give you three quick thoughts on this. 
uh, something to consider why we don't hear from the Holy Spirit like we want to. And number one, I've, I've already alluded to, is that we're inconsistent in reading the Bible and praying. If much of what God wants us to know is found here, how much time do we spend here? A lot of times we're not hearing from God because we don't have a regular devotional time. And that's the most common way for God's Spirit to lead us. If we don't, if we don't read Scripture, think about Scripture, pray about what we're reading in Scripture, listen for God's leading, then we're probably not going to get a lot of guidance. So, so are you reading the Bible? That's the first thing. Uh, you're not hearing from God the way you want to because you're inconsistent in reading the Bible and prayer. Are you reading the Bible? Are you praying? Again, dialogue, not, not monologue. Are you listening when you pray? Do you have quiet places and spaces in your life where you can actually listen? Do you have Christian teachers and mentors and friends that you can trust to help you discern? Second thing is this. Why don't we hear sometimes from the Holy Spirit like we want to? And this is a biggie. It's a biggie. We sometimes don't hear from God what we want, when we want, because we are being disobedient to what we already know. God has already told us something, and we're not following, and we're not being obedient. Again, this is huge, and there's a whole lot more that can be said about this topic, but I want to say this very clearly and concisely because it's so important. God guides us when we are prepared to do his will rather than insisting that our own way is right. Put it another way, obedience to the known will of God is important in receiving further guidance. The Bible says in Psalm 25, verse 9, it says, God guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way and then up in verse 14, it says, The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. So are you not hearing from God the way you want? Ask yourself, honestly, am I being disobedient to what I already know? Are, are you knowingly being disobedient to, to God's general will for your life? Is there someone you haven't forgiven? Are you allowing bitterness to control your thoughts? Are you uh, knowingly, willingly engaging in, in immoral behaviors? I mean, th these, are, these are all kinds of areas that we need to examine to see if, if we're being obedient to what God has already uh, revealed to us. When we're being obedient to what God has already revealed, and when we've determined to be obedient to what God might reveal, then we open ourselves up to further guidance from God. I'm not sure this is an entirely fair characterization, but there's, there's an aspect. Of, it's almost like this. You say, God, lead me and guide me. And, and God says, okay, here you go. Do this, do that. No, no thanks, I'm good. And, and so God kind of says, okay, well, come back to me when you're willing to follow. Again, that might be an overgeneralization, but there's something to that, right? You, you, you pray, you want guidance from God, and he's giving it to you. You're not following it. You're not listening. You're not obeying. At some point, he's like, well, you know, okay, go your own way. See how that works for you, <laughs> right? And come back to me when you're ready to follow my plan. And, and I think there's, there's something to that. So we don't hear from the Holy Spirit sometimes because uh, we're inconsistent in uh, reading the Bible and praying, or we're disobedient to what we already know. And then uh, a third thing real quick is that... We're, we're impatient about God's timing. We're just impatient. Sometimes God's guidance seems to come to us immediately when it's asked for. But there's a lot of times that it takes much longer. Sometimes months. Sometimes years. We may have a sense that God is going to do something in our lives, but we're, we, we've got to wait a long time for the fulfillment of that. Again, some of the, the stories of, uh, of, our, of our leaders in the faith in the Bible, like Abraham. Abraham had to wait years to see God's promises fulfilled. Years. Joseph had to wait years to see God's promises fulfilled. And along the way, Joseph uh, got betrayed by his brothers, thrown down in a well, sold off into slavery, wound up in prison. I mean, a couple of decades here before God's will really got fulfilled in Joseph's life. And I think it's true for a lot of people today. Psalm 27, verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord. 
Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I find it interesting that this psalm equates patience with strength. Bravery. Oftentimes we think of bravery and and strength and and courage as, as charging forward rapidly. But Psalm 27, 14 says we need to be strong and take heart and wait. Waiting patiently is a sign of strength. It can be a very brave thing to do. So how is God leading you today? Where do you need God's leadership? Maybe not just in the, the, the random act of kindness that we're doing, right? Do you know what God wants you to do? What about your, your relationships? What about your, your, your marriage, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend? What about your parenting? What about your grandparenting? Those of us who are children, what about uh, the way that you honor and respect your parents? What about your careers? What about your retirement? What type of, of leading do you want from God? Are, are you going through your days open to God's leading on these things? Maybe it's how you start a ripple effect. Maybe it's something more personal and, and something bigger. I want to invite us all just to pray. And here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead us initially in prayer, and then we're going to sit quietly for a minute and wait on the Lord. A minute of silence It's going to feel like an hour of silence because we're not used to doing it. But just listen. Because I believe that for some of you in particular, you're here this morning for a reason. There's a reason why God brought you here. So that you can hear the voice of God speaking to you in your situation, in your life. So let's, let's pray together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just want to take a few moments, and we want to listen. We, we want to be reminded that, that prayer is a, is a dialogue much more than a monologue. And, and Father, whether it be opportunities for starting a ripple effect of kindness and uh, just doing something nice for someone, or maybe it's something bigger in our lives, how we're living and where we're going, whatever guidance and leadership that you would have for each one of us this morning, we invite you to speak to us. Father, continue to lead us and guide us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A few of you were probably thinking initially, this is really weird and uncomfortable. And that's okay. That was only 30 seconds, by the way. That wasn't a full minute. (laughs) Felt like an hour, right? 30 seconds. Some of you were thinking what popped into your head is like, where am I going after this? Am I going to Cooper Hall to get coffee? Am I going home? Do I have to go to Publix today? Oh, I don't want to make that phone call at work Monday morning. That's what happens, right? When you, when you actually have times of silence and listening, your brain just becomes a jumble of all these things you got to do and all these things you worry about. It takes time. It takes training. Keep doing it. You will find, you will find God speaking to you. I believe that with all my heart. But we've got to have those moments throughout the day Times and spaces for quiet, solitude, and listening. God will lead you. He will guide you. Let's stand together and sing our closing song.
And what do lighthouses do? They guide ships so that they do not crash on the rocks and crash ashore. It's guidance, right? It's guidance. And God wants to be that guidance for you. So as you go out this week, experiment not only with some random acts of kindness and handing those cards out, find a place to sit in silence and solitude for a bit. And just see if the Lord leads you guide you, speak to you. It'll take 10 minutes to clear out your to-do list and your shopping list. Trust me. Your mind will be a cluttered mess for at least 10 minutes. Push it to 20. See what happens. Trust that God wants you to know his will for your life. Hey, stick around. If you're, if you're new with us, we have a hospitality time in Cooper Hall. Just go out these doors here, go across the alley into there, uh, get some coffee or some juice, something to eat, and meet some of the good people of this church. And then come back next Sunday at 930. We're going to worship the Lord again. Or we're going to continue to talk about this ripple effect of kindness and how we can uh, spread that throughout our communities. We'll see you next Sunday. God be with you. <laughs>